The one positive scrap from Robert Mueller's investigatory plate has been the outrage at the power of the surveillance state. Tools that have been spread throughout a number of agencies via multiple laws have proven to be at best ineffective and at worst corruption magnets that when fully charged and weaponized have the power to bring down the presidency. The silent liberty killer among them has always been the NSA's gargantuan net that was designed to secretly scoop up immeasurable amounts of metadata that supposedly keep us safe. Edward Snowden revealed the breadth of the program back in 2013, but it wasn't until six months ago the agency decided to allegedly put the whole thing on ice. And it wasn't the bothersome unconstitutionality. It was apparently the ineffectiveness of the program. They were illegally hoovering up way too much information and probably ran into the easily foreseen conundrum of who sifts through all the barns full of hay just to find a few needles. Attempting to put the toothpaste back in the tube or the horse back in the barn or the toothpaste back in the horse, the NSA stopped collecting that metadata about six months ago, so they say. But can we really trust they've stopped after becoming so addicted to surveillance? And how do we know they won't start back up again? We don't. But someone has to do the unsexy job of finally breaking this unconstitutional spying monopoly. And now a bipartisan, bicameral group of lawmakers is ready to tackle the blight of mass spying. There are so few bipartisan pursuits nowadays that aren't costly and statist. And slowing the rule of the creepy peepers saves money and limits a little of the government's overreach. If some government program has no tangible benefit, why continue funding it if these lawmakers can come together and curtail the freedom-snuffing info suck? They should be in charge of immigration and health care to limit the overreach in these other painfully broken areas as well.